everybody! It's Kim. I'm at ForTheKids.net and today I'm going to show you how to fold a magic book. So we're in the craft room. I'm going to start with a white piece of paper and then we'll do it again with the colored paper. Um, the magic books are cute little books that you can make with your students or if they're above third grade they can learn very quickly how to make it for themselves. The strategy is to turn your rectangle paper, and you can use any size. I've done half sheets of um, copy paper as big and sheets as big as a chart paper. So the first thing you're going to do is fold it horizontally. We used to call that tostada style. And then I'm going to fold it again. So now technically it's a vertical fold. We confuse the kids, but I would tell them to make a taquito. Okay, so now we have our paper in fourths. And if you're teaching anything above third grade, you could also stop and do the multiplication of this. If I have fourths, that's four over one, and I'm going to divide it in half. So that's multiplied by one over two. That means I'm going to get eight slices of paper because two times four is eight. So there's my paper. There's four squares across the top, or rectangles across the top, four across the bottom. Now here's where the magic comes in in your magic square. You're going to fold it again back to that horizontal spot so that you know where exactly the middle of your paper is. And that's where you're going to start cutting is from the fold. Don't cut at the edges up here. You're going to cut from the middle of the paper at the fold. If you tell the kids they're really young and struggling, have them on both sides of their paper. At this point, put a mark at the middle point. If you have somebody really struggling with this, and, and some of my learners and resource would have, um, they find this the dot that they drew because it's in the middle and it wouldn't matter which side they drew the dot. It's going to get cut apart and won't ruin their project. You're going to cut halfway and halfway. So you were in the middle of this direction from the middle of that paper to your halfway mark in the folds. Okay, now you're going to open it up and get a mouth. Womp, 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 womp. So we have a mouth. Um, I think in origami they say this is called bring together. I call it smush. So you're going to smush the mouth open. You're going to flatten out your book. And they all kind of naturally want to flatten out in a certain order. So after, after that point it doesn't matter which way they fold their book to get a book. So we have a cover. Page 1, page 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 in a back. So there's our magic book. I'm going to do it again with a colored paper in case you need to see it again. It's the magic book. The secret is to turn your rectangle into eighths. So I'm going to fold it in half. One times one half makes two pieces. I'm going to fold it in half again. So one half times one half is fourths. Now you could, from this point, technically fold it again in the other half. I don't like to do that because the fold is too thick and it's not as accurate. You could do it from here if you really are um, pressed for time, but I prefer to fold it all the way back open so this middle point is very crisp. Because if you don't have the middle point, you might end up with a wonky book, also a technical term, wonky. Okay, so like I said, we're going to cut from this middle, and I'll show you what I would do with a student who is struggling um, with some spatial or processing issues. Put a dot on this side, okay, make it big, put a dot in the middle on this side, because finding the middle is also um, a language skill, knowing what middle is. But then when they fold it hamburger style again, where to cut, it's very apparent. I'm going to cut from the dot to my halfway fold. And if they overshoot this a little bit, it's no big deal. If they undershoot the halfway point, you're going to have to go back and snip it a little more. The book won't smush appropriately if it's not all the way to that fold. We open it back up to our mouth. Womp, womp. Bring these together. Flatten down. And fold over into a nice little magic book. Um, they're magic books because you can use them for anything. Um, let me give you, show you some things that I've done in the past. And these are just the titles so you can know... Um, I've moved classrooms so many times I, I stopped keeping student samples. But if you were going to do the life of a panda, you could have this one. The students record the size. They could draw a picture. What food does a panda eat? What are the daily activities of a panda? Babies. This is separate, I think, than the panda because, like, um, how big are they when they're born? How many are born in a litter? How often does a mommy have them? Lots of information there. Their habitat, again, could be a picture or a, a word description and then they could do about the author on the back if they wanted or interesting fact. 
Um, you could use it as a book report and on the cover do the title and the author of the book they're going to review. Who is the main character? What's the setting? What was the beginning of the story? What's the conflict climax or middle, depending on the words you're using? The end or the resolution? What do you predict will happen next? And then critique the book. Um, here's one of the other ones that I thought was more fun to do I, with my resource kids for numbers. They were having to learn about expanded form, word form, and number form. So there's our number, 128. In word form, 128. In expanded form, 100 plus 20 plus 8. I did it both ways. Um, in units, there's the 100 block, the 20, the two 10 sticks, and the singles. An interesting fact, and this is kind of another way to connect numbers to kids. 128 is the name as the route number to a highway back in Boston. And there was a back cover. I personally would do two interesting facts because for a lot of kids that interesting fact is going to be the way they're remembering it. And you might also want on your title where you wrote 28 you might want to put standard form in case you think your kids are going to forget it. So these are magic books. They can be used all across any curriculum um, as long as you can divide it up into four, six, or eight parts. Um, it, It'll fit into a magic book. You need it to be bigger, use the chart paper. Um, I hope you like this and you get to try it out with your kids. And I'll see you later. Bye.